Welcome to week 22 of the Multilingual Learners and English Language Learners Science for Grade 5 guidance video. I'm Brittany Ham de Concepcion and I'm the Virtual Content Specialist for Multilingual Learners and English Language Learners for the Science Curriculum in Grades K-5. through five. The contents of this video are designed to help you and guide you as you accelerate the learning of your multilingual learners and English language learners throughout this week using the core knowledge curriculum. In this video, you will see the flow of this week, as well as the instructional focus, weekly target vocabulary, strategies for language instruction, and any additional resources that might be helpful to you. As always, you can see general supports for multilingual learners and English language learners at the beginning of each slide in this lesson series. You will also see links for all resources that we will be talking about in this video and any resources you need to access are at the beginning of each lesson slide. Just to note, the 321 routine to process a text is the chosen strategy that has been implemented throughout the slides for this lesson series. Here's the flow of this week. You're starting unit four, which is protecting Earth's resources. The focus question is what is quality water? For days one and day two, students are expected to be able to describe what makes water safe for us to use. On day three, students should be able to describe how water is treated to make it clean and usable for humans. On day four, they are to read how Flint, Michigan and their challenges with getting access to clean water. On day five, students are expected to write a letter to a friend explaining what is happening in Flint, Michigan and why it is an important issue. It is important to keep in mind that while each day has a content objective, the instructional focus may look slightly different for multilingual learners or English language learners. Day one is a reading-centered activity with writing and speaking outcomes. Day three is more of a listening-centered activity where students will have to watch a video and take notes as well as discuss what they see here and think about the video. Day four is also a reading-centered activity with similar outcomes as day one and day two. And on day five, there is a writing-centered activity where students are expected to use information they have previously read about and discussed. So when thinking about the instructional focus for this week, here are some possible language objectives that can help to guide how your students will be accomplishing each content objective. Day one and day two may look like this. Students should be able to write, tell, or draw and label what makes water safe for us to use by using words such as wastewater, bacteria, infection, disinfection, surfactants, treatment, and or quality. On day three, students should be able to use the same vocabulary as well as tell, write, and draw the process of how water is treated to make it safe and usable for humans using a graphic organizer and words such as the ones before I mentioned from a word bank. On day four, students should be able to record and cite details from the text that answer true or false questions in a graphic organizer. This may look slightly different for your entering or newcomer else, where perhaps the graphic organizer can be pre-filled with evidence from the text, or perhaps you may use a different text altogether, such as a video or a lower level proficiency text where it's talking about the same information and using the same academic vocabulary. Since on day five, students are expected to write a letter to a friend, an option could be that they tell or write this letter explaining what is happening in Flint, Michigan, using a word bank, the target vocabulary for the week, and words that help them to explain, such as because, since, so, and, or the reason why. One strategy you might consider to teach the target vocabulary for this week and for the entire unit is keeping a live and active virtual word wall, such as this one that's on Padlet. This word wall consists of words that have been taken directly from the text that have been added to the lesson slides, and this is the vocabulary the students will see over and over again. So for example, one way the students can interact with this word wall, they can add pictures, they can add explanations, 
to further their understanding and use of the academic vocabulary. For example, they can search the web and find images and videos for the words that they are trying to learn more about and use throughout the week. For days one and two, it might be helpful to focus on the vocabulary that your students will be seeing throughout the rest of the week. That can include the words that have been already mentioned or any other words you feel the students might be exposed to and need to understand. You can use a, an activity such as the Foursquare Graphic Organizer. You can have students do shared reading of chunk parts of the text, as well as modeling the teacher think aloud, giving them discussion sentence starters, and of course, lots of think and wait time. For day three, students are expected to watch a video at least three times and fill out this graphic organizer. It might be helpful to review that target vocabulary once again, ask them to add images to the graphic organizer rather than just words, use closed captioning on the videos as well as some preview video questions. Of course, those discussion sentence starters so they can talk in their small group and lots of think and wait time. Since day four is more of a reading centered activity for your entering or new coming L's, you may want to pre-fill this graphic organizer with evidence straight from this text that has already been provided for you in the lesson slides, and or you can show them this video or any other video that gives them more of a background of what's happening in Flint, Michigan. And for day five, you want to show the students how to write a letter, some upper proficiency L's such as transitioning, expanding, and commanding students may just need the structure of what a letter will look like, whereas your lower proficiency L's such as any newcomers entering or transitioning may need more help with the organization and the structure of a letter. So paragraph frames, sentence starters, sentence frames, may be useful to help them, as well as a word bank using the same high utility words you've been teaching throughout the week to help them to use within their writing more independently. Of course, they can add images if they're newcomers, they can add some words in their own language that will help to show that they understand the content that you've been teaching throughout the week. And of course, as a last and additional resource, translation services may be helpful for some students in the beginning of their English language journey. We do like to mention that translation should be the last resort as we do want students to use more of that target academic and social vocabulary as they are writing, speaking, listening, and reading. I hope this video was helpful as you plan this week to support your multilingual learners and English language learners remotely. We'll see you in the next video.